Hello, my name is Nicholas, and thank you for checking out my video. The topic of discussion is high fructose corn syrup. I receive a lot of questions concerning this, and hopefully in this video I'll answer some of those questions. What is high fructose corn syrup? Is it natural? Who recommends high fructose corn syrup? How does it work in the body? Is it good for post-workouts? Who drinks high fructose corn syrup? What foods and drinks contain high fructose corn syrup? And how are companies cashing in on this? Considering the fact that people have the internet, we are researching, gaining information, insight into how things work. So when it comes to high fructose corn syrup, it comes from corn. It seems to me we have a lot of corn to process. And basically, corn is taken, grounded up, and there are chemical reactions that go on, enzymes and all things, in order to make or manufacture high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is a major manufacturing compound. So the question is, is it natural? Depending on who you talk to, if you talk to a real nutritionist, chemist, he or she will tell you it is not natural. But our government because they like to make money and this is a cheap alternative to make, of course, sugar, if you want to call it that. They say it's regarded as safe in moderation and it is natural. But in reality, in my opinion, it is not natural. Who recommends high fructose corn syrup or fructose containing products? So that can be agave nectar or Pepsi. NOS, it doesn't really matter. It depends on whether you're a person with diabetes, an athlete, or just an everyday person. Now, because I've been caring for my father for approximately four years, he's a type 2 diabetic. And his medical doctor, and even diabetes expert, recommended fructose. <laughs> Luckily, he does not like it, but a lot of people are turning to that. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why it's not really the best way to go about, especially if you are an athlete or even a diabetic patient, okay? So we're gonna go on how does it work in the body. Now in layman's terms, when it comes to glucose, there is an insulin response. And this deals with the absorption sites, sensors in the body, and the liver. With fructose, it's a little bit different because it doesn't really initiate that insulin response the same way glucose does. Actually, fructose goes to the liver and again, in layman's terms, is reconfigured. There is a process in which it goes to, to become glucose. So for diabetes or people who have diabetes, this is not necessarily a good alternative, especially if you're not consuming this in moderation. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. So what happens when the body is saturated with fructose? Well, have you ever heard of non-alcoholic fatty liver? With children, they're finding this is occurring. And depending on what literature you read, it's also contributing to the metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, central adiposity. Now let's take a sit back, okay? Because I'm skipping one of my questions. If we talk about foods and beverages, to compare high fructose corn syrup, a beverage, to let's just say an apple, is not the right way to go about. I guarantee you if you hand somebody 10 apples, they're going to have a difficult time eating 10 apples. But if you hand them like a drink, which a lot of young ones are drinking two or three big 12 fluid ounces, if you consider that to be big, and, of course, it's easy to do that and be hungry afterwards. So that makes perfect sense of why this is happening. So also, when it comes to the liver, we know that's not really good for the liver. And possibly this can decrease good cholesterol and increase bad cholesterol. And for men, if they're gaining weight in the central area, at least in my opinion, this is making him more estrogenic. And it's not good for women either, because if your man's more estrogenic, well, we have to consider <clears throat> erectile dysfunction and all things. And we won't go there for this video, but it's uh, good to bring up. Is this good for post-workout? 
Well, as I just mentioned, if fructose has to be converted later on to glucose and you're two hours out from a workout or whatever, that's not necessarily a good thing, right? And we don't want to depend on that because depending on who you talk to, if you're an athlete, you want to replenish your glycogen stores at the right time. You don't want to rely on fructose being converted and all things to get that going because there are enzymes like glycogen synthase and all that. So this is not ideal for an athlete. So if people are recommending this to you, whether it be NOS, that's more of a supplemental drink, energy drink that a lot of young men are taking or drinking for a pre-workout, a mixture of glucose and fructose, just considering the sugar hypertonic, we know that that actually dehydrates a person and may cause the sugar crash, meaning you go from a high to a low, and that's not really ideal, especially if you're training. And you also have to consider what else is in that supplement drink, let's just say if it has caffeine and you're taking creatine. We know there's an interaction with that as well. So it's not always beneficial. And how the advertisements go with there's this uh, young athlete being used <laughs> to attract younger people to this. It's marketing, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean because in an advertisement that person is using whatever beverage or product. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And the question is, what foods or drinks contain high fructose corn syrup? Well, everything, it seems. If you look at bread, ketchup, or even alcohol. Oh my God, I just mentioned non-alcoholic fatty liver. A lot of young people are just being exposed. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but there are dietitians that are actually recommending high fructose corn syrup. A matter of fact, if you visit the Corn Refiners Association's website or even their video channel, they are talking about high fructose corn syrup and young people. I actually did a video on that, so please click here to watch. And so it seems to me like this is making its way into a lot of products, especially with advertising and all things. Now that leads into my last, I guess, part of this video. How are companies cashing in on this? Well, now, since people are questioning and they're getting the data, well, they're trying to make, let's just say, a Pepsi more healthier. Hmm, that's interesting. So they may put vitamin B in, or some vitamin, and talk about the benefits of that vitamin. But it's in, let's just say, a Coca-Cola. Don't you think that's misleading? So what they're trying to do is say, hey, if you drink this, you're going to get this amount of milligrams or micrograms of biotin or B12 or whatever. They're trying to pull you back in to get you to drink this. And some people fall for it, while others are kind of questioning. And that's the number one thing you want to do when it relates to your health. Now, this is my opinion of all of this. When it comes to healthcare professionals or people who work in the industry as a medical doctor, registered dietitian, nutritionist, or even a nutritionist, or if you visit a vitamin store, I've been to countless vitamin stores and I always see some idiot recommending fructose. And the reason why I call this person an idiot is because they don't take the time to know how something works but will recommend it to every person whether the person is ill or not and to me that's being careless and so the thing that I, what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that if somebody is recommending this to you ask them why why is this good and being that you watched this video I hope you share it with your friends and family I did hopefully post a link relating to a journal article that is free of use, you can download it on my website. I will hopefully post the link in the description box below. Please take the time to read some of it, even if it's intimidating. You want to start somewhere and try to get an understanding. So just don't be misled. Well, this is the end of the video, and thank you for taking the time to watch. 
I hope it was informative and if questions were not answered, please post below. I would like to hear what you have to say. Thanks.